You know, we always want to be ready. Have that tendency of being ready, being vigilant. You know, not missing what God's getting ready to do. Having the discernment to be unction and uh, uh, what he's saying what to do. You know? And, and jumping over the, the nets of the enemy. Because the enemy's always trying to snare us in one way or another. You know, and the, the Lord is saying, come and learn from me. You know, in those areas where we walk with the Lord, we're learning all the time. Learning never stops. There, there's not a day where you stop learning. Amen. Amen. Learning never stops. And it's a wonderful thing because we always got to keep feeding our spirit and starving our flesh. Amen. Because that battle that's within us all the time. And in that battle that's within us, it's called desire. Everyone say desire. desire. One of the things the Lord had put on my heart tonight, he said, uh, you know, one, there, there's a will of desire. And one of the things we want to do is line up our desire with his will. And it takes practice. It'd be nice if it happened overnight. Not saying it can't, because God can do anything. But there's that error where, you know, that learning, people are learning, you know, if we don't learn, we get burned again. So there's that area also where we got to be consistent. Consistency is the key to victory. Without being consistent, you can't have victory. You know, and, and, and so in this, the Lord is sharing that how many people have drift, drifted and, and have changed, how the enemy has altered their will because their desire is no longer lined up with the will of God. Amen. Would you turn to Proverbs chapter 3? In verse 1. And, and let's read this together. Proverbs 3 verse 1. Is everybody there? My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. For length of days and long life and peace, they will add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be what? Health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all of your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor detest his correction. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects, just as a father, the son in whom he delights. Now, he ends here on verse 12 with chastening, correction. Why? Because he just laid out a whole arena of saying, these are the things that please me and that are my will. And when your desires fall out of my will, I'm going to chasten you. I'm going to correct you. Now, that's where conviction comes in. And, and sometimes there's shame, there's, there's guilt, there's condemnation. But when God does it, that conviction causes us to turn because we sense not only a conviction, but a release of his love. And, but the enemy loves to come and bring guilt, condemnation, beat you down, tell you all kinds of stuff, try to bring you of your past, of your mistakes. Well, there's not one person here who's been guilty of making mistakes, right? Right. We've all been guilty of making mistakes. That's why the word says we've all fallen short of the glory. But there's one thing that's beautiful about the king of glory who loves us unconditionally, and that is he forgives us. He forgives us. He doesn't see it anymore. The problem is, is we still have a tendency to see it. Or the enemy constantly reminds us of what we've done. You know, every one of us, we know that the enemy, and that's how he attacks us. You know, if we, if we can just first understand that the enemy can only attack you from your past. Amen. He's not in your future, you know. That's why we're to live from the future, 
not from the past. Because if we're living from the past, we're always beating off the enemy. But if we live from the future, the enemy is not there. He's always trying to bring you back. Amen? And the word speaks about who we are. That's how we live from the future. Everything of God's will is in the word. So as we begin to line up our desires with his word, it begins to line up our desires with his will. And when we begin to line up our desires with his will, we produce fruit that are pleasing to him. We manifest the divine nature. And we have favor. Favor. Amen? Praise God. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Will of desire. How many of y'all know your desire has a will? Amen. And what's its desire? Flesh. <laughs> it wants everything. Doesn't the enemy have a desire for you? So we've got to line up our desire with the will of God so it doesn't promote the works of the flesh. And 2 Corinthians 6, everybody there? Good. Hallelujah. In verse 11, would you read it with me? Wonderful, wonderful part of a verse here. This is powerful. What does it say? Oh, Corinthians, we have spoken openly to you. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own affections. What's an affection? A desire. He said you're restricted by your desires. Why? Because they are not lining up with the will of God. Amen? What does he say? He says, okay, I'm going to give you a little correction. He says, now in re return for some, I speak as to children, here it is, plain and simple. You also be open, he says. Don't be unevenly yoked with unbelievers. Why? Because associations bring impartations. Amen. Don't listen to secular music. Don't watch perverse movies. Don't go to bars. You, know, you don't have to hunt for a spouse. God will send one in due time. Amen. Stop hunting. It says, For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? The rules of the world are lawlessness. Why? Because they're living without a law. Now, you and I live with a law. That law is imparted in me and you. It is a law of, of, uh, of commands that we know that, please God, when you are born again, in fact, you're born with the law within you. It's there already. And the Lord says, when you are born again, he says, not only will I put my law in you, but I'll give you my spirit so you're going to obey it. Amen? So we already know what pleases God and what displeases God. We already know it. Why? Because we get convicted. We get guilty when we know, oh God, I, there's something, I, this ain't right. But we are in the world. That's all we did was drowned it with drugs. We drowned it with uh, fame and money and staying busy. And we, even though we did think, yeah, but I know this is bad. It's okay. I'll get it. <laughs> right, so, and here the Lord was trying to always get us to line up our desires with his will. Amen? So let's go a little further. He says, So what communion has light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with Belial? And what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement is the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said. I will dwell in them. I will walk among them. I'll be their God, and they shall be my people. Therefore, which means if you come out from among them. So that means we're going to have to come out from among them to reset our desires according to his will. Come out from among them, be separate, says the Lord, and don't touch what's unclean. How many of y'all know you can touch something unclean with your thoughts? With your eyes? With your ears? With your heart? With your hands? With your mouth? All those you can touch something unclean. Amen? 
He said, don't touch, what, don't touch what's unclean, and I'll receive you, and I'll be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. So there's an area of those, those we are restricted by our desires until these desires are exchanged for the desires of the Lord. So here's a simple prayer. Lord, align my desires with your will. Simple prayer every day. Lord, align my desires with your will. Or you can, and, and there's, my, I know in my prayer time, Lord, I'm always exchanging, Lord, I give you my desires for your desires. Because there's an exchange prayer in the penetrating booklet, prayer booklet. It's powerful. In Colossians chapter 5. Or, I'm sorry, let's go to Thessalonians chapter 4. If you don't know his will, how can you line it up? Even though it's in us already. But because the mind isn't renewed, the soul isn't renewed, it cannot interpret what the Spirit is saying. Remember, your spirit is always communing with God. Your soul, which is your mind, your will, emo emotions, and imaginations, is what interprets what God is saying. So, if your mind is not renewed, if the word is not in you, it won't be able to interpret correctly what the Spirit is saying. Amen? And 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, is everybody there? Hallelujah. I'm not there, but I will be. Glory! In verse uh, 1, let's read it. Finally then, my, finally then, brethren, we urge you and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to what? Please God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your what? Sanctification, your separation, your set apart for him. That you should abound from sexual immorality. That each of you should know how to possess your own vessel in sanctification and honor. Not in passion of lust, like the Gentiles who do not know God. That no one should take advantage and defraud his brother in this manner. Because the Lord is the avenger of all such as we also forewarned you and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanness, but in what? In what? Holiness. Holiness. Therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man, but God, who has also given us his Holy Spirit. So, again, the first thing to know is, what is God's will? Well, we know that he wants sanctification. He says, you should know how to maintain your vessel in sanctification and honor. Why? Without touching unclean things. You already know. Why? Because you have a Holy Spirit who tells you things to come. Amen? He warns you. Anything that you and I have done wrong, we already knew it. We knew we were doing it wrong. But the enemy tries to convince us so that we get into the place called reason. When you've entered the realm of reason, now you start justification. Once justification comes, you now compromise. Once compromise comes, you become complacent. Once complacency comes, you become lazy. And you reject and you become full-blown rebellion. Don't ask me to repeat that. Praise God. Get the CD. <laughs> Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 5. Again, one of the first things is to know his will. One of the things that we need to have a desire is to know his will, but that desire of knowing his will will not come unless you're willing to learn. So you must have a desire to learn. Amen. Jesus said, come and learn from me. So there must be a desire to learn and always learn. 
There must be a desire to grow. Never get to a place where I know it. You in trouble. No, I know it all. I know the word. Yeah, I know it. Yeah. No. Then you're prideful, arrogant, and plumb dumb. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22. It says something very powerful. What does it say? But the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is what? No law. Why? Because the, the reason why it says no law is because you're fulfilling it. And verse 24, and those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. You've crucified the flesh of its desires. Why? Because if you are led by the Spirit, it is, the flesh is crucified. And if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. So it's important to be Filled with the Spirit. So by pro coming and praising and worship, by assembling, you're allowing yourself to sow into the Spirit to reap life. And one of the things that's happening is God is going to begin to release His desire to fall in line with His will just by coming together. And there's times when we're coming together and when there's conviction that says, you're not lining your desires up with my will. Hello? And that's okay. What's the, what's the chastening for? What's the conviction for? So we get what? Lined up. You know, the Lord knows what's coming. There's a preparation and training right now because this country hasn't seen nothing yet. You wait. People are going to wonder, how could that happen here? I thought this only happened in third world places. Again, our enemy's not overseas. Our enemy's in the White House. We have a demonic influence and a satanic military that's grown tremendously. And they've come out of the woodwork. They're out. They don't care whether you know or not. Because prophecy is being fulfilled. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. So we are to crucify those desires by being led by the Spirit. Ephesians chapter 2. And when we produce good fruits, it means that we are lined up with the will of God and our desires are being lined up with Him. Ephesians 2, please. In verse 1. You know, the word says, they will say, peace, peace, and all of a sudden, sudden destruction. You know, there can, no be, there can never be peace on this earth until Jesus comes, because he is the Prince of Peace. And, and, I, and here's another, I want to grab hold. It's not the people that are fighting each other. It's the rulers of the country that are fighting each other. And manipulating the people to agree with them. Because Satan wants everyone dead. Even the Illuminati he wants to kill. Because he's been sentenced to the earth, its atmosphere, and all the realm here. He believes that if he can destroy the earth and everyone in it, he can escape prison. See, we've got to see deeper than what's going on here. He wants to destroy the... That's why he doesn't care if the whole... Or if the, everyone lets off nuclear bombs to destroy the whole earth. He doesn't care. He would love that. He wants the whole earth to be destroyed and everyone in it so he can escape prison. Ephesians 2, verse 1. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of this air, 
and the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the what? Desires of the flesh and of the mind were by nature children of wrath just as the others. So when you and not, when our desires were not lined up with the will of God, we are considered children of wrath. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were idiots, dead in trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. Again, grace is not magical. It is the plan of God. It's called his will. With cooperation with his will, you are under grace. Without cooperation with his will, you are not under grace. I don't care if you've accepted Jesus 40 times. Amen? And raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Beautiful, isn't it? So we know that the desires of the flesh is selfishness and perversion. It's perver you know? And what the enemy wants to do is manifest the desires of the flesh, but if you are led by the Spirit, your flesh is crucified. We are no longer children of wrath. We are the children of light, blessing. We are eternal lights. Amen? Not carnal nights. Hello. 1 Timothy 2. First Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1, uh, starting at verse 1. <clears throat> Let's speak it, please. You therefore, my son, be what? Oh, I'm in the wrong one. <laughs> I guess he was talking to me. <laughs> you, my son, be diligent. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. Therefore, I exhort, first of all, that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for who? Amen. So what he's saying? You must pray. If there's no prayer life, there's no victory. It's impossible. Why go to church? No good. If you went to church enough, if you were in fellowship enough, you'd want to pray. People go to church and don't participate. They go for a show. There should be a desire when you get in here to touch the heart of God. Because when you touch his heart, he touches you. And you fight till you get touched. Because when you get touched, you change. And when you change, you help everybody else. <laughs> Verse 2. For kings, and, what are we going to pray for? Kings and all who are in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior who what? Desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Okay, so what's his desire? That all men be saved. Is that his will? So what he wants us to do is get that same desire that all men be saved so we can line up with his will. Amen. So there's an area where you and I got to do something. We got to die. We got to die to ourselves. We've got to learn so we don't get burned. We got we to be consistent and maintain abiding in prayer, his word, worship, and fellowship so we can maintain the new change. See, when you lack, slack off, you lose the change. You lose it. You begin to drift. All of a sudden, that justification first starts with reasoning. Then the justification. Then you look for excuses. Well, you know, my toe hurts. <laughs> I lost an eyelash. You know, something real stupid. You know. Uh, the enemy loves to make, get, try to get excuses. I'm tired. Who isn't? I'm sick and tired of this place. 
I want to go home. But in the meantime, <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God, Psalm 34. In the meantime, I want to fulfill the will of God and have the desire that all men be saved. Amen. Amen. Psalm 34 and verse 8. Let's read it together, please. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no want to those who fear him. Want is a desire. For young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not what? Lack any good thing. You won't be in want. Come, you children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord, who is a man who desires life and loves many days that he may see good. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and what? Seek peace and pursue it. Because the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. And his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil. To cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. So we see something very powerful here. We see that the will is to please God. The desire is to maintain an area of fear or reverence. That Again, people think that fears. Ah! That's demonic fear. Now there's an area where there's a fear of protection. You know, you see a fire, you're going to run like, you know, heck. I mean, if you're in it. Amen? You're going to go warn someone you see something in danger. There's a sense of fear, but that fear is a good fear. It says, wake up, dummy, and get the heck out of there. But then there's an area where there's a reverence and there's a, there's a horror, there's a tormenting fear where people walk in fear where it's always tormenting them. Fear of not enough, fear of success, fear of lack, fear of uh, failure, fear of this, fear of that. Just fear of people, all kinds of fear. You know, that's the wrong fear. But there is a fear which is reverence, honor, and respect. It's got nothing to do with torment or, or, or horror or terror or anything. It's got an area of love. It is a fear that promotes a love for God Almighty. It's a reverence. Amen? Reverence. Not reverend. Hello? Reverend such and such. Forget that stuff. I get people say, oh, reverend. Now, don't call me reverend. There's only one reverend. That's Jesus. The King of King and Lord of Lords. I have an office called pastor. None of those offices were called reverend. <laughs> Foolish creatures. <laughs> Hallelujah. Proverbs, Proverbs 13. Even the word bishop. Bishop is cool. It's all right. You know, I mean, there are overseers. But if you really search out the word bishop, it is a pagan leader. <laughs> but, you know, we, we don't look at our bishops in the kingdom and the body as pagan leaders, you know, but it's a pagan word. In fact, you know, it's used as an overseer. I'm telling you, you know, even the word of God itself, there are things that have been uh, infiltrated where without the Holy Spirit, you're not going to understand. You know, I mean, we got an English Bible, but we got a Greek word called Christ. When it's supposed to be anointed one. That's what Christ means, anointed one. But there's so many translations and be careful the NIV because it is extremely watered down. Extremely. I don't recommend anyone to read the NIV. If you're going to look for it to just compare some things, maybe to get a little bit more watered down understanding, that's cool. But make sure that, uh, make sure you get back to the uh, 
New King James or King James, but King, the King James has got poetic stuff, you know. Anyways, hallelujah. Proverbs 13 and verse 1. Would you read it with me? A wise son heeds his father's instruction, but a scoffer does not listen to rebuke. A man shall eat well by the fruit of his mouth, but the soul of the unfaithful feeds on violence. He who guards his mouth preserves his life, but he who opens wide his lips shall have destruction. Here we go. The soul of a lazy man desires. Why? Because he's always in want. Amen? And has nothing. So he desires and has nothing. But the soul of the diligent shall be made what? Rich. That's consistency, isn't it? To be diligent is to be consistent. Does everybody got that? A righteous man hates lying. So, should it be your desire to hate lying? Amen. But a wicked man is loathsome and comes to shame. Righteousness guards him whose way is blameless, but wickedness overthrows the sinner. Oh, hallelujah. Lazy man is always in want. Now listen. When a desire of want, okay, that desire, when that desire does not line up with the will of God, when that desire supersedes the will of God, it will cause chaos and disorder. It always causes chaos and disorder. Why? Because it puts a person in anxiousness. It puts a person where? In anxiousness. They are anxious. They can't sit still. They've got to do something. And most of the time they do something, it just causes more chaos. It's the I got to do syndrome instead of I must submit syndrome. Amen? In 2 Timothy chapter 4. Hallelujah. Are you getting something today? In verse 1, 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. Is that happening right now? Yay. Amen. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. That's already happening. We got all kinds of goofy stuff starting. But according to their own desires, their own desires, these desires have been influenced by the demonic forces. Now that's called their own desires because they're promoting selfishness. They're promoting the flesh. They're promoting carnality. Number one is I now, no longer him. Because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, so they're going to all flock to one area. And they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables or, or what we may call as rumors. Rumors. Lies. But it says something very powerful. It says, but you be watchful in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist and fulfill your ministry. Fulfill your call. Fulfill what you're doing. Amen. Everyone has a call. We're all called. The first call we're called to is a battle. That's your first call. Battle. So you got to know spiritual warfare. Battle. Amen. We are called to battle. Our purpose is to destroy Satan's kingdom and our destiny is to infiltrate the world system with talents and abilities God's given us to rescue souls. That's his desire. And when that desire is in you, it will line up with his will. Amen? So no matter where you are, 
if you're tentative and sensitive, you'll always be ready. You want me to say something to this one, Pop? What do you want me, what do you want me to do with this? No matter where you go, you'd be filling gas. You'd be looking, okay, what's next? You're always ready. You're going to cash. You're checking out at the store. This one. Okay. Always, no matter where you go, no matter what you do, you're fulfilling your evangelistic ministry. Every born-again believer has an evangelistic ministry. You don't have to be called evangelist to be an evangelistic ministry, okay? Every believer should be able to teach. Everyone. Every believer should be able to cast out devils. Every believer should lay hands on the sick. When it comes time to it. Amen. Every one of us. Those who believe these signs will follow. What's the first thing it says? In Mark 16, 16, it says, through 18, it says, and those who believe, these signs will follow us to say, and they will cast out devils. Why is that the first thing? Because that's what's in the way. <laughs> you got to get rid of the devil first. Then you can impart. <laughs> Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Praise God. James chapter 1. I call it slapping the hell out of someone and making room for heaven. <laughs> James chapter 1. And verse 14. Or verse 13, let's say that. Yeah, let's start at 12. <laughs> Blessed is the man who what? Endures temptation. What's the enemy going to tempt you with? A desire. Amen? That's all he can tempt you with. And where is he going to tempt you from? The past. Yeah. Blessed is the man who endures the temptation of the deceptor. For when he has been approved, he will receive a crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when you are tempted... I'm tempted by God. You know, people go, why did God allow this to happen? You did. God didn't. You did. The Bible says that the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Not God. The Lord comes to bring us life and life abundantly. And far above all we can ever ask or think. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And where there's stealing, killing, and destroying going on, there's access. There's open doors somewhere. Something's not right. There's a desire not lined up with the will of God. Something's not right. Amen? Verse 14. Uh, let's say 13. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by what? His own desires. And what? Enticed. So the enemy's going to influence that desire. He's going to try to walk. He first throws a little fiery dart. Pew, oh. Unfortunately, you don't feel it. Then it begins to infiltrate. And that one thought pew, comes in. And if you don't get rid of it, it hides. Then it comes in again. Pew, oh. Then the enemy starts watering it. And he starts bringing it back again. Again, again, and unless you get rid of it, you agree with it. Is everybody okay? Once you've agreed with it, he's got a hook in your jaw. And it's just a matter of time where he's fishing. Poof. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when desire is conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Whoa. Hallelujah. Is everybody all right? Let's go to Proverbs, or let's go to Psalms 37. Psalm 37. 
verse, starting at verse 1. Let's speak it, please. Do not fret because of what? Evildoers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like grass and wither as a green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Let me share something with you. As you delight yourself in the Lord, you do it with worship. You delight yourself in the Lord. What begins to happen is he releases his desire into you that pleases you, that lines up with, that pleases him, that lines up with his will. All of a sudden that desire comes and it's like, whoa, man, I'm a, man, I just want more of you. There's something more I want. And when that's released, because when we come together and that, to his desire, because we're delighting ourselves within him, then that is released. When it's released in you, that desire lines up with his will. Did you ever know, know uh, I look at it as plumbing sometimes, you know? If you got a crack in your plumbing, the water leaks out, right? Amen? Uh, so once you, now, if a pipe gets connected to a wrong pipe, it's going somewhere else. So what has to happen is that pipe's got to reline up again for something to flow. And when there's more of a, a connection, it flows faster. It flows stronger. That means the anointing is released more. There's more desire. There's more things. You become more sensitive. You be, you're able to see things more. You're able to discern things more. And you stay in that condition by constantly refreshing yourself and then delighting yourself in his presence and in fellowship and abiding and in his word. Amen? Is everybody okay? Praise God. Let's go a little, well, verse 5, it says what? Commit your way to the Lord, trust also on him, and he will what? Bring that desire to pass. Why? Because it's his desire that's been placed in you. And he loves to express himself through you. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Patience is called endurance. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way because of a man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath and do not fret. It only causes harm. Hallelujah. Philippians 4. Four, four. Philippians 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord when you feel like it. Rejoice in the Lord only on Sunday. Or Tuesday night. Or Friday. Rejoice in the Lord when you've been shorted on your check. <laughs> Rejoice in the Lord when somebody slams you in the back of your car. <laughs> Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness, uh -huh. see that rejoicing is the area of delight in him. So he's going to release that desire and it's going to manifest the fruits of the spirit. And one of the fruits of the spirit is gentleness. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. So how, whether you, if you respond to things, respond is according to the way the will of the Lord, or you can react according to the flesh. Hello? So you're going to either express Christ or express the devil. Let your gentleness be known to all men, the Lord's in hand, and be anxious for everything. <laughs> and be anxious for what? Nothing. Listen, we all have to step back, don't we? But see, if you're not 
sensitive enough or discerning enough to step back, you'll be always in a flood of affliction, your own. You'll be your worst enemy. The devil doesn't have to do nothing. To you. He's just sitting there getting fed. Be anxious for nothing. And there's that area that we must discern when we become anxious. You know what? It's a boundary the Holy Spirit sets. And if you're not staying sensitive, consistency, having a prayer life, you will not be sensitive to that boundary when you become anxious. And when you step over that boundary, there'll be a puddle of affliction. Chaos and disorder. Hello? Be anxious for nothing but in everything by what? Prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, we all want our family to be saved, right? But you know, you can run them over. Hello? We all want to prosper, but we can get out of order. We all want to please God. But we can become workful instead of relationship. And that's an area where we must be sensitive about. Amen? In Hebrews chapter 10. Hallelujah. In verse 35. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 35. Would you read it with me? Therefore what? Do not cast away your what? Your confidence. Which has great reward. For you have need of what? You have need of what? Endurance. So that after you have done the will of God, you may receive what? The promise. So does the promise come before the will? No. God says, you do this, I'll do that. Amen? Hallelujah. For yet a little while, and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, but if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not those who draw back to perdition, but to those who believe to the saving of the soul. And I'm going to close it. Ephesians 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Will of desire. In verse 20. You know, one of the things the enemy always tries to tell people, it's too late. It's never too late to turn around. Never. No matter how, God always throws a rope all the way down to the pit and says, grab hold. It's never too late. No matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, it's never too late to turn around. Never. Ephesians 4 and verse 20. But you have not so learned Christ, he says. Indeed, if you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you what? Put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Verse 30, uh, 25. Therefore what? Here it is. He's telling you what? This is what you, we want. This, this is what pleases God. This is the desire that you and I should have is to put on a new man. So our desire lines up with his will. Therefore, putting away lying, let each of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no longer, 
but rather let him labor working with his hands what is good that he may have something to give him who is in need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit. I'm going to say that again. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let what? All bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. That is his will and his desire. And that's what you and I must align with. Amen? It's important that we become sensitive to these areas. It's a prayer, simple prayer. Lord, allow, align my desire with your will. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that the seed be imparted in each and every one, that it be protected by the blood of the Lamb and grow and bear fruit for your glory, and that there would be that exchange of desires and the desires to line up with your will in each and every one. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Be blessed.